I love home theater, and I really love Dolby Atmos. I've recently upgraded my theater to Dolby Atmos, and it has completely transformed the way I watch movies. It really has added a whole new dimension, and I personally really love it. However, I think the only way really to experience Dolby Atmos is with true overhead ceiling speakers. The problem is most people that want Dolby Atmos are gonna be buying some type of in-ceiling speaker. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but if you've built speakers like I have of the Klipsch THX Ultra 2 surround sound clones, well, those ones are just a very high efficiency speaker compared to some in-ceiling speakers. So I want something that can keep up with that, something that doesn't need a lot of power and something that can be crystal clear. And that's when I came up with this. This is my Dolby Atmos DIY build. And these things come in some boxes you can put right in the ceiling or attach them to the ceiling if you don't wanna go inside. So let's go ahead and show you how to build these. It's really easy and I think anyone can do it. Let's go ahead and do that right now. There's not much really to say about this build. It's a fairly straightforward build. In fact, it's literally just building a box. There's not even any supports in the middle. So you just have to build a 14 by 14 by seven inch box. And really how you do that is entirely dependent on you. However, if you want detailed plans, just go ahead and go to the link in the description, go to my website. I'll have all the plans there, including the different crossovers, because I did create a crossover for two completely different drivers for this setup. Besides building the box, you are gonna have to cut one hole, and that's for the driver. Now, I use a CNC. You can use whatever you want, whatever stuff you have available to you. Now the reason I use the CNC is because I'm actually trying not to go all the way down to normal depth. I'm keeping about a quarter inch off and you'll see why later. So this is the driver I'm using. It's the Eminence Beta 10CX. It's a fantastic driver. If you're familiar with the Volt 10 by DIY Sound Group, it's a very similar driver that they use. Uh, you just connect a compression driver to the back, which means you can switch out your driver, uh, the high end part of it, anytime you want. Now I designed this around this F110M and the JBL D220Ti. I'll have both crossover information and frequency response graphs on my website, so if you're interested. I'll also give you my opinions of them at the end of the video. As you can see, it's transparent, and that's because there's a waveguide inside that woofer that allows that tweeter volume to go out. Now one of the things I find nice is when you glue a box together, if you just let it sit for a while, kind of gluing together by itself before you clamp or anything else, it'll start to get a little bit more rigid, which allows you to handle it a little bit easier.
you'll notice here is that where the terminal cup's going to go, it's off center. And that's because if you centered this, you weren't going to have enough room for the compression driver and the terminal cup. So I brought mine kind of down near the bottom. You'll just want to be cognizant of that when you put your terminal cup in where you want to put it at. Now, I told you that I left the quarter inch off and that's because I was going to add this Baltic birch front to it, which I really, really like. I use just a clear coat water-based finish on them and it really comes out really nice and they look pretty beautiful, especially with that red. Now because of this I oversize it. It's really hard sometimes to get the perfect fit on top of something you've already built. So I just glued this and clamped it on, just making sure to have the woofer cut out lined up. Once that was glued on, I just trim routed it out and they were finished. Now that they're finished, I did try out both the JBL tweeter and the Eminence tweeter and I want to leave you with some of the thoughts on that while you look at some of these pictures. So let's go ahead and go to some of my thoughts on the differences between the two. You're probably wondering what my personal opinion is. Well, let's just be honest. I designed both of them. They're tuned a little bit different and they're designed that way because there's different types of people that like different types of things. The JBL is tuned a little bit higher, has a little bit more higher frequency, while the Eminence is tuned just a little bit softer and it gives it a mellower sound. And honestly, out of the two, I've listened to both of them in my surround sound. I actually prefer the Eminence, which is surprising to me because I didn't think I would, especially when I first saw the frequency response graph. I really thought that I'd like the JBL better. It just ended up not necessarily being the case in this particular arrangement. So in this arrangement, I think I would personally build the Eminence. Now, if you like a little bit brighter sound, then you're gonna want the JBL. I'm a little sensitive to those higher frequencies. So for me, the Eminence wins out. It's just a little bit easier to listen to. However, if you're listening to a lot more music than me, I'm mainly, mainly movies. If you listen to a lot more music, you might actually prefer the high end on the JBL. All right guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to let me know how you think about it in the comment section down below. All right guys. This is 123 Toyd of Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.